friend of mine took me to play football once. It's a classic nerd playing sports story. I hurt my ankle in the first five minutes. So I went to the emergency. When I got there, the nurse checked my ankle uh, and informed me that the doctor isn't available yet. Now let's, this, let's stop the story here for a minute and perform an experiment. By show of hands, how many of you thought the nurse was a female? And did you think the doctor was a man? Yeah. The number of female GPs in Australia crossed 50% mark in 2017. And still, we think of a man when the word doctor comes up. This is a very mild example of unconscious bias. We all have them. Bias against certain people, professions, age groups, even appearances. When Hollywood decided to characterize, characterize emotions, we saw joy as physical perfection. Anger, a middle-aged man. <laughs> Fear, a skinny dude. Sadness, a nerd. And disgust, of course, an obnoxious teenage girl. And these representations made sense to us because they spoke to our unconscious biases. Until recently, we thought, OK, machines are going to help us avoid our biases and make decisions based on facts and logic. What we have found out, however, is that artificial intelligence is actually adopting our biases, amplifying them by orders of magnitude, and spreading them on a much bigger scale than we ever could as individuals. Now, thanks to the movies like Terminator, iRobot, Ex Machina, when we think of dangers of AI, we think killer robots, right? They become sentient and turn on us and intelligently decide to wipe us out to save themselves or the planet. So we spend a lot of time and energy debating whether the machines will become intelligent and when. What we fail to realize is that for now, the threat is not from their intelligence, but their stupidity. Or rather, our stupidity being propagated by them. AI is being misinformed by our biases like Ageism, racism, sexism. It's internalizing everything that we do. And then it's producing recommendations that are actually devastating lives as we speak. We only need to look at systems like Compass, which helps to convict African Americans far more likely, 10 times more likely, than any other race of offenders, even with similar histories. So how do we stop our biases from getting into artificial intelligence systems? Before I answer that question, as if I can alone answer that question, let me take you back to 2009. I had recently moved to Sydney and was enjoying every minute of it until one day when, on a pedestrian crossing, I was about to walk into oncoming traffic, and this guy he grabbed my arm and stopped me. Great guy, saved my life. I thanked him, and the first thing he asked me was what my background is. I had no notion of racial background. I said, computer science. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, and he goes, no, 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 which country do you come from? I told him, it's Pakistan. 
a weird look appeared on his face, the one that I couldn't decode or I didn't want to. He slightly turned away from me and stopped talking. He avoided any eye contact until the signal turned green, and off he went. I was standing there thinking, what did I do? As far as I was concerned, I was Aussie. I mean, I was watching AFL while eating Vegemite. <laughs> I, was, I was building my life here. So, as far as I was concerned, I was as Aussie as they came. Apparently not. I was quite confused, to say the least, and at this point, I could either complain and whine about it to friends like normal people, or I could just forget about the whole thing and get on with my life. So, of course, being the person that I am, I did neither of those. <laughs> Instead, I went to the library. <laughs> you guys are amazing. <laughs> I had to know why someone would behave that way to me or to anybody. I had to understand it, to process what I was feeling. So a few weeks and many books later, I understood the reason. And it changed the way I looked at human behavior, and of course, it changed my PhD topic. You see, according to the dual process theory, our brain has two systems of generating thought. System one, which is called... System one... <laughs> <laughs> Academics, right? <laughs> it's fast, reflexive, automatic, and frugal thinking. It uses heuristics containing biases to make sense of a situation quickly, like, for example, what do you do when a grizzly bear attacks? Probably not much, but you get the idea. It's about survival instincts. And then we have system two, which is analytical, investigative, measured, and higher-order thinking. It uses facts to make sense of a situation. Now, research shows that often the impulsive thinking of System 1 trumps the rational thinking of System 2. Even in the presence of facts and evidence, we tend to go with the thoughts that automatically surface, convincing us of our safety and comfort, which is probably why most of us get stuck in dead-end jobs and toxic relationships. So, this guy that I met on pedestrian crossing was not being offensive to me, per se. It was just his system one taking over. Throwing his biases into the mix, his alarm went off because of the triggered word Pakistan. He started seeing me as an outsider, unwanted entity, or downright threat. His survival instincts kicked in and bang. I went from a friendly stranger to a potential threat, just like that. That's what we call cognitive bias. It's a survival mechanism that tries to warn us against potential danger by generating these feelings that we call hate or fear. It has kept us alive throughout our evolution, so it's a good tool to have. But, when misplaced, it can drastically affect other people's lives. Sometimes for the better, as it did for me, but often for worse. And now more than ever, because now we are not alone. Now we have another information processing entity affecting our lives, our world, our decisions. Artificial intelligence. With AI in the picture, the very biases that have kept us alive in nature are working against us. 
looking at some examples of AI gone wrong proves that. So here we have Microsoft's chatbot Tay that went from a bot that was stalked to meet us to this. In a matter of hours, learning from our behaviors all along. So to avoid such incidents, we started looking for solutions in the data. If we have unbiased data, we'll have un unbiased results and decisions, right? But there are two issues with the approach. Number one, data is being created at an exponential rate. Can we debias all the data? And how long it's going, how much time and effort it's going to cost us to do that? Number two, more than 180 biases have been identified to date, and more are being identified with time. How can we eliminate something that we haven't even identified yet? Sexism was mainstream a few decades ago, as you can see from these ads. And these are the least offensive I could find. Thank God it's changed, or has it? Last year, I saw Google Translator being gender biased. So when I was preparing the, for this talk, I thought, OK, let's check if anything's changed. This is what I found. I put some statements in English, like, she's a doctor, she's the leader, she's the boss. Translated them to a gender neutral language, Hungarian and then back to English, and voila. He's the leader, he's the boss, he's the doctor. <sighs> and I'm sure we have ways of thinking right now that we think are OK, but we'll know better in the future. So what do we do about these biases that we haven't identified yet? And what we are going to do when we do discover them. Are we going to clean the data again? We need to have a better solution. We need to get rid of the inequality, not the factors in the data. Bias doesn't originate from data. It originates from our minds. If we hope to find a solution, that's where we have to look. We start collecting experiences since the day we are born. And as we go through life, we start classifying these experiences into good experiences and bad experiences. And then our mind does something interesting. It starts creating these correlations between experiences and objects and people involved in those experiences. And sometimes it mistakes correlations for causations. So we end up spending our entire lives avoiding some objects or people thinking they caused us misery and suffering, not understanding that the suffering wasn't because of them. It just occurred at the same time. But when we look deep enough into an experience and its underlying facts, we start to distinguish correlations from causations and fact from fiction, and we start finding the truth of the matter. And when we look into the breadth of experiences around an object or a person, we see this whole wide spectrum of biased reactions, positive, negative, supportive, conflicting, indifferent. And when we bring them all together, like the colors of the rainbow, we see light. We find balance. We neutralize biases. And that's exactly what I did in my research. I built this cognitive system that extracted and stored experiences from different people about other objects, concepts, and other people. 
I connected them with unique identifiers of those objects and people. I ended up creating this whole network of experience, experiences of different people, so a hive mind, if you will. And then I assigned weights to each experience based on the credibility of the source. You can't trust everyone, right? So when my algorithm would look into an object or a person, it would look into the depth and breadth of experiences attached to that object or person. And as, as a result, I saw biases countering biases. I saw facts eliminating perceptions. And just like that, I saw biases mitigating. As Nassim Talib says, you need a story to displace a story. You need bias to displace bias. So let's use our biases as the powerful and positive tool that they can be to bring balance into our virtual world. As for the real world, I leave you with these thoughts. Switch off autopilot. Practice engaging system two. We are not in the hostile environment of the jungle today. We can afford to switch to system two in that moment when we are about to step away from someone just because they are from somewhere we don't like. Be a detective. Take your experiences apart and ask yourselves, why do you think what you think? Have uncomfortable conversations. Reach out to people on the other side of the spectrum and talk to them without getting offended, without passing judgment. And maybe together we can find the truth of our world. But above all, educate yourselves about AI, cognitive biases, and human behavior. We are not so different from our prehistoric ancestor who, when unable to understand something, would either attack it or worship it. We are doing the same with AI, and we can't afford to do that. We have to understand it and have conversations with our children about it so that they are well equipped for the future, a future where AI will be applied by them instead of on them. So engage with your biases and divisions of biases of all the human beings and learn from them because it was bias that kept us alive throughout our evolution and protected us from the beasts of the jungle. And it will be bias that's going to help us through the jungle of virtual world, protecting us from the beast that is AI, taking us into a safer future. <laughs>